God for the opportunity to be here. Uh, please, I'm late. Man, uh, you know, 30 minutes. I had a very important meeting of ministers in the area and I had to go. So please be here with me. Today, we're going to go to lesson 19 of course 108. I want to for rather the core cost and rewards of discipleship. We're going to look at today rewards of disciples part B and this we're going to focus on eternal rewards first then the next lesson when I walk talk about rewards in this time. I also saw in the preceding lesson from the Garden of Eden through the old covenant, Yahweh has a system of rewarding those who obey his commandments and punishing the disobedient. When Yeshua came to earth, he announced a new order. It was different from the old one, which was based on religion. Yet, the issue of rewards for the obedient and punishment for the disobedient was inherently written in the new covenant. Stay with us, and let's see what the Lord will tell us. Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. Take this vessel, bypass my limitation, and communicate expressly to your people. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. One of the most important things Yeshua came to do was to restore relationship of lost humanity with the Father. And it was based on one principle, to deny the old man and Satan rule of our being in the heart. And that's why his first message was Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is in the heart. You see, in the old covenant, they invite people to the temple to meet Elohim, and then through rituals, they try to please him. In the new covenant, the place of meeting him is in the heart. If it is so, then Satan will not be allowed to rule the heart. And if it's so, self will not be allowed to rule the heart. And that's the essence of what Yeshua taught, you know, the incredulous Pharisee, Nicodemus, in John 3 from verse 1. Except you repent, you cannot see. Except you repent, you cannot enter the kingdom. And that is by the regeneration of the work of the work of Holy Spirit and the Word. And then Yeshua said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. It's no longer through rituals, it's by access to him. And this new relationship, this new, this reunion brings a new relationship with the Father. And it is one that what we have seen in this course is don't just believe on him, but you progress to, you know, move to be a follower of him. And you cannot follow him while self is on the throne of the heart. So apart from the first level where you repent and take away, move from Satan to Yeshua, we need to also take away self-rule so that Yeshua will be all in all. So for those who accept this invitation to come to come and enthrone Yeshua and take away self-rule something happened we got a, a spokesman concerning now if we do it this way what shall be our reward let's read from Peter in Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27 then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. Remember, Peter forsook the fishing business of his father, he and his brother Andrew. Remember, even his wife. You know, Peter had a wife that is not mentioned often because, you know what? Peter left everything. His wife at home, he would take care of her, provide for her, but he was with Yeshua all the time. Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? That question he asks it on behalf of every disciple. If we accept your invitation to follow you the way you've described in this course so far, what will be our reward? Verse 28, Yeshua gave us the reward for those 12, apart from Judas Iscariot, who fell by the wayside. And then verse 29, he gave the reward for all those, including you and I, who will give heed to all that he's calling us to be and to do. Verse 28, Yeshua said, said unto them, Very life unto you, that ye which have followed me 
in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Wow! Now these unlearned fishermen, these bases of people who were called, that they will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. All the people who had served, who had been Israelites, major figures, minor figures in the Bible and outside the Bible, they will judge them. That is serious. But we'll leave that since it was limited to those 12. Apart from Judas, let's go on to the promise to every one of us. Verse 29. And everyone that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. The many that are first shall be last, and they that are last shall be first. This is serious. So we're going to look at the rewards Yeshua promised. We look at the rewards he promised that are eternal and the rewards that he promised that are in time. So today we're going to focus on the ones that are in, in the world to come. Let's look at that eternal one. Through the answer of Yeshua, we understand that there are some specific rewards that lie up in store for true disciples in eternity. Going through the Holy Writ, we can break it down into bit size so that you can take note of them because it's important it will help you to make the right decision when you're faced with temptations and trials, when you're faced with the prospect of giving up, falling by the wayside, when you're faced with the prospect of, you know, it's too hard, it's too tough, it's too difficult. What would you do? Men and brethren, let's break it down about a world to come the promise of eternity number one is the gift of eternal life if you're a disciple of yeshua if you accept his call to move from believing to following him you have eternal life this is a life of endless bliss which will be spent in the presence of yahweh as father stretching from time to eternity in fact the mystery of elohim will be accomplished at that time and at the end of this lesson today we'll give you a sneak peek of what that means in Revelation 21 and 22. Brothers and sisters, this is awesome. Even if that was the only reward, you know what? It's worth every pain. Number two, if you're a disciple, to the end, you will escape the torment of hell and the lake of fire and brimstone that will burn forever and ever. You will escape that. And again, if there's only benefit, it is what all the troubles and sufferings we can ever encounter on earth as stated in the story of the rich man and Lazarus told by Yeshua in Luke 16 from verse 19 to verse 31. Look it up. You will escape the torment of eternal damnation and fire outside the presence of the Lord. Number three, who gain if you are a faithful disciple who becomes very productive in your calling according to your gift and calling you're going to gain the crown of righteousness for faithful service in which Yeshua and the kingdom had brought you over everything else Paul the apostle because he you know spent or was spent for the gospel he told Timothy he was waiting to be executed to be beheaded and he told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, from verse 6 to 8, for I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them who love his appearing. Wow. All those, including you, if you will place Elohim first, if you will accept to be a disciple, there's a crown. It's not just eternity. Everybody who is born again, who remains to the end, will be part of eternity. But some will get the crown of righteousness. Those who took their gifts and calling and spent and were spent, they poured out their life as a drink offering to the Lord. The Lord will decorate them with the crown of righteousness. 
Peter and Paul, the disciples, they look forward to that day when they will be appear before the judgment seat of Yeshua to try their works. As we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 10 to 15, the fire of the Lord will try the works. And those who abide are going to shine forth. And you know what? In 2 Corinthians 5.10, Paul said to the Corinthians, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yeshua, that every man may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether it's good or bad. Brothers and sisters, that's so awesome to receive the crown of righteousness. Number four, again, we're going to be co-heirs with Yeshua. Co-heirs of this earth with Yeshua. You see, by the blood is shed that touched the earth, not only did he pay for price of redemption of humanity, he also did something absolutely amazing. Yeshua also, by that blood that touched the earth from the side and from all the blood streaming over him, he also secured this earth for his kingdom. So when he returns, he's going to rule and reign over this earth for a thousand years before we go into endless eternity. And he will rule alone. Those who are true disciples who have paid the price of rejecting the world system as it is, the corruption, and they do not allow the corruption that is a world through loss to dominate them, but they actually serve him faithfully on this side of eternity. When he returns, they will rule and reign with him because all who are faithful are going to be co heirs and joint heirs with Yeshua, co rulers and joint heirs. Brothers and sisters, you can read what will be their fate in Revelation 21 to 4. The devil will be locked away for a thousand years so that he will not disturb, so that they will rule and reign with Yeshua. You go also look at Revelation 1, 5, and 6. It's made of priests and kings. In this act, we have a measure of it. It's a dress rehearsal. The real thing to come is when he returns. If we suffer with him, as we are told in 2 Timothy 2, 12, we shall also rule with him. And Romans 8, 17 says, If children then hairs, hairs of Elohim, join hairs with Yeshua, it so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. So we are joined hairs. This world as we see it is sin wrapped. The day is coming when Satan is ch chained and then, you know what? A new world. A thousand years. No suffering. No pain. No death. No war. No plane crash. No sea crash. No, no ship collision. There will be no bombing. There will be no sickness. There will be no evil of any type for a thousand years. And those who hold on are going to inherit and serve with him. People will be posted all over the world. People will be posted over the U.S., over the nations of the earth. People will be posted over the states of those nations. People will be posted over, you know, cities and state and um, uh, mayoralities and communities to rule the people in that sphere of influence as priests and kings. Priests who start, who teach them the ordinance of the kingdom and kings who rule over them. Reporting to Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem. That's why Jerusalem is contested city. It's contested because it's the city of the great king. This Saturday, join us by 10.30 p.m. on Zoom to pray for Israel. The prophetic, the hand, the hand of the prophetic clock of the Most High. Once you can get the mystery of Israel right in prophetic setting, you get a right concerning the end of the age. So we're going to pray for Israel. I'm going to make an announcement after. The Bible says in Matthew 5.5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And it's so important that we understand it. We understand it. If you go to Revelation 21, all of it. Revelation 22, all of it. You read it, you have an idea of what is ahead. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to be filled with the consciousness of these things. That's why there's an appeal being made. Matthew 24, 13. But he that endureth to the very end shall be saved. If endure to the end, we're going to be saved. We're going to save to be enjoying all. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 
The Lord says something to disciples of the Lord, to say to all believers, and it makes meaning, especially to disciples, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Elohim, neither that corruption inheriting corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Not every believer will die. Some will be alive when the trumpet will sound. So in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and the we shall be changed. Those who are alive at that time, in a moment of time, there is a swift change. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, O oh, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Elohim, which giveth us victory through Yeshua our Lord. Then he ends with this. And I say that to you by the Spirit. Therefore, my beloved brethren, those of you who have listened to this course and studied this course, he said, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this is a joke. You know, if you have been forgiven much like me, not just forgiving to enter the kingdom, but also the process of the Lord. I remember a process that was intense, taking away all the junk in, take plucking out all the things, mindset, everything, the test that trials he allowed before he could uh, open the door to an apostolic ministry that has covered the six continents of the world. It took his process. But you know one thing that was very, very clear was when I understood that this is what lays ahead. I said, Lord, please say anything that remaining, even up to now, even up to today. And so when people begin to play up and act up, when people begin to play all the games that people play, I say, Lord, keep my eyes away from this. Look up to you. Why? Brothers and sisters, the Lord said, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't allow your confidence to limit you. Don't allow your past to trap your future. The, door, the Lord says, if you remain to the end, these are the things before you. They are awesome. They wipe away all tears. A moment with the Lord will settle every insult, every abuse, whatever you suffered on earth. One moment in eternity is going to bring joy unspeakable. And I want to urge you, brothers and sisters, these eternal rewards are enough. The next lesson we'll look at the rewards it can give us in, in time. But even if you got none of those rewards and just got these ones promised, let's be people who have high values, who value things that are enduring. Brothers and sisters, a moment with eternity is going to to Elohim in eternity is going to wipe away all tears. Everything you didn't receive on earth will be like dung. We will see him in glory. One glorious morning I shall see my Savior. One glorious morning by and by, by and by, when the glory is You know what? these things share this video share it encourage other people let's esteem these things highly brothers and sisters may his grace uphold us by whoever Simon number one please summarize any three of these eternal rewards two how has the revelation of scriptures in this particular lesson how has it impacted you how does it encourage you to truly pay the price to remain a disciple all the way to the end? I'm going to pray for you now, for myself, make an announcement. Father in heaven, just have your way.
you didn't give us this lesson just to titillate our ears. You gave it to us to encourage us. I pray that beyond the limitations of my speech, shall you minister to every brother, every sister who is a disciple. Lord, minister life, minister grace, plow their hearts by your spirit and produce the fruits you desire hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirtyfold according to your determinate counsel that none will fall by the wayside. Uphold all of us with your right hand of righteousness. Give us the enablement to continue to the very end. For these rewards are what everything we suffer for your name's sake. Thank you. Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.